This aircraft broke nearly every existing commercial aviation record. One example was the Qantas flight on August the 16th, 1989. A new 747 touched down at Australia's Sydney International Airport, having flown 18,001 kilometres from London. At the time, this was the longest airline flight in history. On July the 25th, 1966, Boeing took the first physical step of building the world's largest commercial aircraft. But before the construction of the plane started, they had to build the world's largest factory. More than 2,800 men were employed to construct the factory that had a capacity to build several jumbos at the same time. Prior to starting the building, much research and development had to be done to confirm exactly what Boeing wanted to create. Thousands of hours were spent on wind tunnel tests and on paper designs to reduce drag as much as possible. Drag determines the plane's fuel usage, and this equates to money. For the 747 to be a success, it had to be economical to operate. A full-scale mock-up of the 747 was built to test every part and component of the plane. Basically, that first 747 was nothing more than an engineering tool. Components were arriving from contract companies both nationally and internationally. When full production began, all these four and a half million parts had to arrive on time, every time. The logistics were as huge as the plane itself. This is the first jumbo coming together. This is theory being tested in practice and a plane becoming a reality. The tolerance of the engineering process had never before been so stringent in aircraft manufacture. Many substantial obstacles had been overcome to reach this point and the tension was heavy as this was the make or break point of the project. It was not only the large parts of the jigsaw puzzle that had to fit, it was the millions of small pieces that also had to fit and operate perfectly. Overall, 75,000 engineering drawings were used and each assembly instruction had to be followed to the letter. To get the plane together for the big presentation day was a colossal job. The first plane was rolled out on September the 30th, 1968. Development costs to that time were said to exceed one billion dollars, but that didn't include the cost of the world's largest factory. The first two operational planes were created just to be destroyed in one of the world's most expensive destructive testing exercises. This is a wing flying for the equivalent of 30 years. This is a wing breaking after being pushed upwards by 29 feet. One test saw the tail of the plane dragged along the runway until the plane actually reached its minimum unstuck speed. Undoubtedly the tail wouldn't hit the ground in commercial use. The rejected takeoff test is another interesting experience for the test pilot. The brakes are locked up and the plane is given full throttle down the runway. First the tires blow, then the undercarriage gives way, and finally the fire starts. Anti-lock brakes, now common on cars, have been used on the jumbo from the very beginning. Another test is to land the plane with a number of wheels locked up. This tested the tires and what would happen in the event of a tire failure. It also demonstrated what would happen if a braking malfunction occurred. It wasn't all smooth flying for Boeing. There were some problems. The plane's huge size was one. The first jumbo was overweight and would not be of operational value. Regardless of the problems, Boeing worked through them with the same dedication that they had when building the plane. What Boeing had built was an aviation milestone and will probably go down in history as the greatest commercial aircraft of the last century.